Could you tell us a bit more about what you're doing and why you're here today? Sure, so I travel around the world wearing this sign and the one on my back, which mm -hmm. is my definition of a dad, a human male who protects his kids from gender ideology. Mm -hmm. And I'm here to have conversations mm -hmm. because there is a massive child abuse scandal going on all across the Western world where kids are being taught that just because they're a little different, they're struggling, whatever's going on in their life, that maybe it means that they're trans, that they were born in the wrong body, which is a huge steaming pile of rubbish. And we need to abolish this ideology in its entirety, in its entirety but what we really need to do is stop the medical abuse going on with these kids. Children cannot give informed consent to puberty blockers, cross-sex hormones, and surgeries. We're causing irreversible harm to children and turning them into lifelong pharmaceutical patients. So I'm here to spread the good word. What kind of pushback have you had from the public? Have you had any you know, people coming up really angry with you? Yes, right yeah. away. Because I was here yesterday, it was kind of a quieter day. It yeah. did start to heat up towards the end. I was on Sky News this morning, so I took a little break and came here, just because this is where you do these things. Mm -hmm. I'm told, in Melbourne, this is the best spot. And there was this domestic violence rally going on. Mm -hmm. And of course, we're all against domestic violence. But the people who attend that rally, a lot of these women don't like me. Because going along with that, a lot of them are trans activists for some reason. So they're against domestic violence against women as they should be, but they also don't know what a woman is, which is kind of strange and they don't want me to be here. So I was getting a bit of flack from them. I can imagine that. Yeah. Um, I think as well, we're seeing a lot of this um, rise in schools as well. I personally worked at a school where um, there were young children actually identifying with a different name, different gender without the parents being made aware and the school would actually hide it from the parents as well deliberately. What do you think is the answer when we're seeing such an increase of this in schools? How can we push back against that? So gender ideology has no business ever being taught in schools. There's nothing scientific about this. This is entirely activist-led. This is a quasi-religious philosophy, essentially believing that we have a gendered soul inside that doesn't match our sex. Really, this ideology floated around academia for decades, and it wasn't such a big deal. But starting really around 2010, I'd say after all the gay rights battles were won, the new objective for all these nonprofits became trans rights, and they've turned what is a mental illness into a civil rights movement. And with tons of money and government backing and all these medical bodies that are captured as well, they've pushed this into schools. And they're creating this school to gender clinic pipeline. And they're taking parental rights away. To hide from a parent that their own child has a new name and pronouns is so absurd. They are ideologically grooming these children to believe there's something wrong with them and they're keeping it a secret. Who keeps secrets from parents? Not people with good intentions. They're treating parents as though they're automatically a threat to their own children, which is outrageous. Mm. If they think there's abuse going on in the home, they're already mandatory reporters. But with this one issue, they treat all parents as though they're automatically abusive. So we need everyone to wake up, get informed, learn how to speak about this. And eventually we will get this out of schools, like some other jurisdictions in the world are doing. Uh, one more question for you. Um, I think a lot of the gender ideology influence is also coming from social media as well with platforms such as TikTok. You see, we've seen such a high influx now of gender activists, um, teenagers normally, who go you detail about their transition story. And then as we know as well, children as young as 13 can use that platform, but we know children are younger are using them as well. They're watching this content and then they're getting inspired and thinking, oh, well, if they can do it, why can't I? You know, maybe I'm a girl, but I'm feeling a bit boyish. I like wearing men's clothes does that make me a boy but then what is the answer to that what what can we do if you've got like trans activists posing in this way you've got young children watching this content how can you control that how can you push back so the number one thing is this is a parent's responsibility to keep their children off of social media i've got two girls they're 12 and 14 years old they're not on social media at all and they don't want to be on it because we've had conversations about this i didn't just tell them you can't go on it they came to the realization themselves that, yeah, this isn't going to be good for their mental health. And if we keep them off it, they don't get addicted to it. So you have to be proactive as a parent and get your kids off all this screen time because a lot of parents are being lazy and they're letting their kids be raised online. So it's parental responsibility. Other than that, I think, you know, it's hard to ban all these platforms. You can ban TikTok, something else will spring up. With TikTok especially, I don't mind that some governments in the world are taking action to ban them because it seems kind of like a psyop that the CCP is doing to harm our civilization. Thank you so much for all the campaigning you're doing. It's incredibly important. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.